When COVID-19 came, I set out to conquer something that I feared, and that was riding an electric unicycle. I figured I'd have some time on my hands and actually be able to put, dedicate my time to it. And as you can see, it's hard to see in the video, but is this one has some good uh, damage done to it. And the learning curve is steep. Now I'm 48 years old, and this is not something that I would normally take on. But since I was a child, I always feared things and never tried it. And um, I wanted to try something in concrete. So three months of frustration, lots of mods to try to see what would work and what wouldn't work. And I thought I'd pass that information on to somebody that's trying to do this and is frustrated and lost and uh, feels that they can't do it. Because I, many a time I frustrated and came home and threw it on the ground and pouted basically like an old child. Anyway, so this is a 9 bot S1. I picked it up really cheap. Um, that's why I kind of had a good opportunity. Um, picked it up new, but it was cheap. And I, what I've done to it to make my life easier, trial and error, is I took and put two of these pads on here. These are tactical knee pads. And I basically double-sided taped them with Gorilla Tape to the board. I found having pads on this particular unit was almost, if you're learning on it, it's almost a necessity. You need that area to control it in the beginning, the area with your knees, just to give you that confidence that you can feel the, the unit. And then the next thing I've done, um, which some may disagree, and I, right now it works for me, but I removed the plastic and grip tape and I'm doing bare metal. Um, I don't recommend it in the rain, obviously, but, and I don't recommend riding this thing in the rain either, but this bare metal, for some reason, works really well with my Vans uh, shoes, that is, of course, uh, Vans shoes. It just makes it to where you can still kind of move your feet when you get on it, which has been a big problem with the grip tape. You couldn't um, position yourself once you got rolling. And I did it on both sides, and I, and I go back and forth. I'll put the plastic back on, and I'll probably remove the pads. But this is where the pads are positioned. They're right where your ankle bone would be, and so your foot kind of sits in here gives you a good platform feel it's like you're kind of locked into this little area with your with your shoe and i sometimes will ride with my feet on the outside which does give me good control but i still feel a little loss of control of this thing when it starts to wobble and that's going to be inherited but i am now riding it confidently uh miles at a time uh going from start to finish uh don't practice on starting so much from the ground up start with a rail i highly recommend doing that but try to get off the rail the fastest you can. Because when I was doing it, I got stuck to the rail and that was a big handicap for me. It was really uh, a challenge to leave the rail, the confidence you have by going. But what it does though, is give you the confidence about when you get onto the thing that you need to commit. There's no getting around it. Um, commitment is uh, key. The faster you go, the more stable this thing feels. These only go about 11 to 14 miles per hour before they start kicking back, but they don't kick back so hard that it scares you. But you want to be in that speed range. And it sucks because you're going to fall. I've only fallen to the ground once, but I've dropped this thing multiple times. I've just escaped it. And it's kicked my feet and it's hurt my shins. And I wear pads. I, I, in the beginning, I did not until I learned when I fell the first time I had my pads on, which was great. I used wrist guards and, and a helmet and knee pads. Helmet is, is, I mean, even a full face helmet is not ridiculous to ride on something that goes 14 miles an hour. It's not that fast, but man, um, I've lost my teeth before in a bike accident and I don't want to do it again on something like this. In case you have a, a mechanical error, a battery stops it and it goes forward. There's a lot of risk in these things, so take your time. But it, it took me nearly three months to do this. I've got almost a, I think I got between 60 and 100 miles on this guy. And I'm just now riding it confidently. And it's still a little shaky, but um, I've hit bumps, I've hit things, and it just rolls right over. And I really want to get a larger wheel, and I planned on it, and uh, the cost is just too high. So I'll probably ride this one until I, can, until I just can't ride it anymore and keep my learning going. Um, but always remember, you're, you're going to get it. It's, it the, my biggest thing that I say is commit. I mean, as soon as you get on it, lean forward and go because that once you get past that little threshold it, it just a whole new world opens up and i and i highly recommend just keep at it you will the reward of trying so hard for so long pays off so much that you'll you'll feel like you actually accomplished something and you did this is a very difficult machine to ride it's it's one of the hardest things 
sadly, that I've ever done in my life. And, and I'm happy that I've conquered it. And it's, it's amazing. The feeling's amazing. It is a lot like what everybody says, like flying. You're just kind of floating along. I've had segways. I've had everything. I, I, I ride scooters on a daily basis. I do a lot of stuff with these things, skateboards, everything. And I just really enjoy the ride on this. It's just, it's a challenge. It's not that something everybody can do, not something everybody puts the time in for. But from a beginner, somebody that has never ridden anything so difficult, I've ridden skateboards and stuff and electric ones, but this, this was um, one of those challenges that I think, um, just to give you a confidence boost, you will overcome it. It just takes practice, lots of practice. And I did about an hour a day. I don't recommend any more than that. Your feet will hurt, you'll get frustrated, you'll get tired. You wreck it once, um, just take a break, take a deep breath. Uh, headphones work, um, although you, you want to do that in like a parking lot, not out on the road, obviously. Um, and in a parking lot would help, but it is good to try it on a trail, like a concrete trail, two-sided, where people come and go, um, when it's less traffic, and then that way you're confined to an area and you learn just to go straight. Worry about turning later because it comes right after that. It, it is almost comes natural after you learn to go straight. You just lean and it goes. I mean, you move your knees a little bit and it just goes. And it, it follows your every move as long as you're looking at the horizon, looking straight ahead. Don't worry about looking around yet. That'll come in time too because it's, it's already hitting me within hours of riding around the block a few times. But just get these pads. You want them to be almost an inch thick, any kind of padding, and then just mount them in the same position if you have the same unit. If you don't have the same unit, just get something like this, if it doesn't come with it already. This should have come with it, but it looks so much better without them. But I'll tell you, if you can't ride it, what's the difference? If, the looks, if it looks great, it's just pointless. Um, so I'll probably end up removing them once I get good at it. But right now, it works, and this, this right here is key. These things have a roughness to them. They're, they're cool um, that way. I wish they had to build them like this, because they are a little rough. I have sprayed um, uh, undercoating on mine just to give it a little bit of grip but you can ride them straight off without those things on there, the plastic caps. And then later on, probably put them back on with some grip tape once you get used to riding it. But it did help me. And it also gives it just that, it seems like you're a little lower to the ground with them off. And I don't know why it feels that way, it just does. It's back half an inch, not even that. But anyway, I hope that helps. If you wanna put some questions in the post on how I overcame the fear, cause I still fear it a little bit, but I can help you in any way I can, I will. Um, just keep at it. I'm 48 years old, believe it or not, you know, this is not something that uh, most 48 year olds go out and do. And, uh, and it makes me feel good about it because it's, you, you, when, anytime you conquer something that you have a fear of, it's a challenge, it's a conquer, and it's a win. And uh, I feel like I've beat it. I, it. I'll probably still fall. I, I will probably still have times because you're gonna get overconfident. But remember, it's, it's just all part of the game. And once you conquer it, you're gonna be like, because it is a great mode of transportation for just getting to the store or something and you can carry it with you it's great it, it beats a lot of things in the world of uh, of transportation in the electric world so i hope that helps if you have any questions let me know i'll tell you the pads came from amazon they were only 10 bucks a, pa a pair i bought two pairs and um, this was free taking that off and everything else it's just there i set it up on one of these little bins that's the best thing to get if you have two of them you can calibrate the wheel i highly recommend calibrating it often if you fall um, it did help me a lot. And also, one more thing, something I've heard differently from everybody, tire pressure. I put 50-something pounds in these things in the beginning. It came with 30. I'm down around 30 again. It does help stability. It doesn't help handling. It does help your stability, though. Just think of a flat tire, how much more surface area you have. Start there. You will get a pinch flat eventually if you keep it there. It's just nature of bicycle tires and all that neat stuff. But I, I tell you, it was a hands-down one of the best things that I, I could have done uh, is do lowering the air pressure, taking those pads off, putting the pads on the sides, et cetera, that you will, you'll be amazed on how different the machine acts. And, uh, and please let me know what you do. If you, if you conquer it, I want to hear everybody's uh, achievements. Thanks. Bye.